Hey, my tech friends, thanks for stopping by. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Let's continue to grow this channel. Hope you guys enjoy this video. Hey guys, welcome to another homebrew system. In today's system review, we're going to take a look at the SASNet Windows XP revision. Now, during our installation process, I'm only going to really highlight things that are different in this version versus our traditional Windows XP. And if there's nothing different, then the next screen you guys will see is when we're logging into Windows for the first time. Okay, so this is the first screen we see once we log into the SASNet version of Windows XP. What I'm going to do is I'm going to install our VMware tools so we can get a full screen. Okay, there we go. We're back up in Windows XP now in the SASNet version. Let's, uh, let's take a look around and see what is actually in this operating system, what it offers that's in addition or has been removed from the just the base out of the box configuration of Windows XP. So far, I don't have anything. So far, it looks pretty much standard. Let's take a look at the actual system itself. So it is stamped. See my processor, we can see the revision. It is Service Pack 3. Don't have any customizations there. Okay. Okay, so maybe we got firewall configuration in here? What do you think? Nope, firewall is turned off out of the box, so that's that's always good news for security. All right, so we don't have anything added in our add remove programs. We don't have anything in an add and remove components. Firewall is disabled. Let's see if we have updates. Let's do it the old-fashioned way here and let's show updates. So we have no updates applied to the actual configuration. Okay. Okay, so we don't have any updates installed. We're missing portions of the operating system. We don't have a firewall. We don't have any configuration for security that I can see at all. I'm not entirely sure yet why this would be a good idea in any way shape or form for anybody on the planet earth to actually run this operating system i don't have it's not trimmed down as far as performance is concerned because it's it's the same as i would have on a vanilla version of windows xp Okay, guys, just as a comparison here, because I was, like I said, trying to figure out specifically what it is with this operating system that makes it better than the other ones. So the machine here on the far left is our SAS machine. That's the machine that is advertised as clean, whatever that means. The machine in the middle is a vanilla, out-of-the-box Windows XP machine with no updates of any kind. It's just Service Pack 3 ISO file installed. And the machine on the far right is the machine with all of the updates, including the point of sale updates and the WSUS updates pushed to it. And that's the performance impact of all three of those systems sitting side by side. Far right, all the updates, all the patches, everything on it. One in the middle, right out of the box, nothing installed on it. One on the left is the one that's marketed as clean. So let's scan the clean system with WSUS, uh, not WS, I'm sorry with Nessus and see specifically what this OS shows. Okay, so we're on the Nessus scanner now and um, this system's completely up to date as far as the Nessus scanner is concerned. It's updated today, so it has all of the vulnerability details. So I scanned both systems. Um, I scanned it, our Windows XP system with all of the updates. The one that has the WannaCry ransomware patches, the one that has everything on it as far as an update. It also has the NIST 
800-171 uh, compliant group policy configuration on it for Windows 11. It's been uh, slipstreamed into the operating system and secured. So basically the OS is completely patched and includes additional patches which were not designed for that particular operating system. That's part of the project that I'm working on in the background is to create a uh, configuration for deployment for Windows XP so that way you guys can continue to run XP and actually have the security built into it, at least in the vanilla form. Once you add a bunch of like unsigned, unknown applications to it, kind of on your own. But at least from the operating perspective, operating system per perspective, we can lock that system down. So let's take a look at the one that we have for our full updates and our group policy. This system does not have the Windows firewall enabled. Zero, none, nil. We don't have anything on that operating system. The reason why is because the operating system is fully secured, including all the updates and everything else for modern browsing and modern use. The Windows XP operating system doesn't have a single vulnerability listed, listed because we've patched not only for the vulnerabilities that existed in XP, but we've also patched for the point of sale ones. And then we've also patched for the Windows 10 and Windows 11 ones by slipstreaming the configuration into the registry and locking the system down. We literally have no vulnerabilities on that system. So let's take a look now at our SASNet one. Now mind you, the SASNet one has indicated that the support for the operating system stopped in 2017. However, it indicates on their website that it was a clean operating system. Let's see how clean it is. Not so clean. We have 27 configuration issues, one medium, two high, and four criticals as far as the configuration is concerned. And if we drill down into our criticals, into our highs that are actual issues, you'll see one of the ones that are most notable here is the one that does not patch against the WannaCry virus. So this machine is actually missing patches that existed when the machine went into end of life. So this should have been patched with this WannaCry ransomware patch based off of what the site indicates from the clean operating system and the end of life date. But it just simply wasn't. So I think what we got to do then is we have to just take into consideration that this operating system, while it's clean, I don't know what that means, but from a clean perspective, it's not faster. It still has just the same amount of overhead. It's lacking in security. It's missing updates. It has no configuration whatsoever. Even from the time that the issues were available, it didn't have the patches or the fixes uh, applied to the actual system. Well, I could spend the time and actually fix the OS it's pointless because we already have our project configuration for our non sasnet configuration. So if I go into the actual vulnerabilities for the one that's fully patched, it's at zero. There's no reason for me to patch the other system. We already know that we can patch the other system. So I would say based off of a security uh, respect, you're probably better off just running the vanilla version and then slipstreaming the updates and the configuration once I put them out on our Git repository. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the short one. Um, I'll review the rest of their systems. SASNet has uh, Windows 7, Windows 8.1, and Windows 10, and then a paid version for Windows 11, which I won't do. But I'll do the ones for Windows 10, uh, 8.1, and 7 to check them out. Thanks for sticking around, guys.